This painting is the last Prello, we believe. Uh, research seems to be corroborating this fact. We were very lucky we did a talk at the University of Pretoria which um, pricked the interest of Karat the Kampir and we were very fortunate to have had Karat and Saluami the Ru from the University of Pretoria come in and do a infrared scan process of the painting to ascertain what it looks like underneath the various layers of paint and to give us a better understanding of the various pieces that comprise this significant and historical image. Karat de Kamper um, is a real academic's academic. He, um, he's an art sleuth, he's an art PI. But Karat loves to get to the bottom of the history, the production, the fabrication, the process of making the artwork. We, we uh, research the technical analysis and the provenance of paintings, uh, looking at where they come from, what the artist might have did, done to them, and um, yeah, and in that way we also research things like fakes and forgeries. It's been a great pleasure for us, for Aspire, to be able to facilitate this kind of academic research where it's not a, a commercial project, it's a project about art history, it's about research, it's about you know investigating uh, scientifically what is going on with this painting and trying to get a better understanding for where Alexis Prello was at when he made this work and what the meaning of it all is. Today we did uh, ultraviolet light uh, photography. Now what that does is it sort of um, removed the top layer of the painting visually on, on the screen and it sort of takes then away, you know, that just that top of sometimes looks at changes in the in the work. Um, uh, it'll if there's restoration on top of the work, it'll remove that. Um, you know, it obviously not physically, but uh, you will see an image of what it looked like before the last layers were added. And then you've got different filters, and those will take it a bit deeper and a bit deeper. Something like the painting behind us uh, has a very thick layer of, of white paint on it. So normally that won't work. So then you light it from behind. Um, and then you get a bit more of that UV filtering through and you can actually then see what's going on behind. Well, what we found uh, on the painting is that, um, well, in my opinion is that what you see on the painting is exactly what the artist meant to do. Um, there is a underlayer and then the white layer you see currently on the painting. So there is actually nothing painted underneath that. Uh, so the, the art is meant to create what you see. Originally it seems that the face seems a bit more woman-like than, than it does like this. Um, most of the black on the face, the stubble, uh, some of the, the black above the eyebrow, most of that were not there. Um, uh, that is the, the topmost layer. So originally it was a bit more like the, the face had a bit more female look to it, um, not as harsh as it looks at the moment. Like I said, the, the, there was no stubble to it. Um, some of the blacker parts next to the face uh, were, were, were at some stage uh, not blacked out. So um, those are all things that the artist probably, when he looked at the painting, decided to add, uh, you know, to, to paint on, because I still believe he was, he was busy with it. That's why it's unsigned. In art of this era, certainly the majority of 20th century art, it was most common, it was most typical that artists would sign and in Alexis Preller's case, he invariably dated works as well. Um, I think the fact that this work is not signed is simply just a result of the fact that, you know, he hadn't quite got there. He might have been quite close to that point, but, you know, he stopped working on it and went into hospital to have an operation which he expected to come back from and finish the work and just unfortunately as fate had it, he never returned. But I don't think there's any real effect that the absence of a signature has because of the fact that it's so unequivocally an Alexis Preller and even more than that, I think the fact that it doesn't have a signature and the fact that it's got this almost exotic, mythical, historical appeal to it, I think far outweighs the fact that it doesn't have a signature. And I think all things considered with this painting being so 
important and being such a historical document, being the last painting that was in his studio, the last unfinished work, um, I think adds a lot more allure and a lot more mystery and romanticism and, you know, sexiness, quite frankly, than a signature would have done.